Hello everybody, I'm Sound from Inspiring Minds and today we are going to study about the cholinergic antagonist or we call them as parasympatholytic drugs. So let us uh, understand how does they work. Okay, here it is a presynaptic neuron and here is the effector organ. Presynaptic neuron, we know uh, the presynaptic neuron in the parasympathetic system it is releasing what acetylcholine and even the postsynaptic neuron is re releasing the acetylcholine on the effector organ yes how does the work is that any cholinergic antagonist will bind to the cholinergic receptor cholinergic receptor kya hai ye hai cholinergic receptor and it can be nicotinic receptor or muscarinic receptor agar drug us receptor ko bind kar rahi hai either, either it is nicotinic or the muscarinic and blocking that receptor and is not producing any intrinsic activity that drug is called as or that agent is called as parasympatholytic agent or the cholinergic antagonist Now we will talk about where at what level the cholinergic antagonist works okay as I have told you that the cholinergic agents they can be anticholinergic agents can act on nicotinic receptor B or muscarinic receptor per vivo act kar sakte hai. so if they act on muscarinic receptor then what do we call them we call them anti muscarinic agents anti-muscarinic can block muscarinic receptors okay this two classes are non-selective or selective non-selective ka matlab kya hai that the agent is non-selectively binding to the muscarinic receptor that is it is produ producing diffuse action it can bind to m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 five type of all five type of muscarinic receptors and uh, such agents have uh, comparatively low therapeutical output you know why because mujhe uh, a therapeutic out, uh, output chahiye by blocking the m3 receptor that are in the bronchus okay and i want the bronchus to be dilated that is the therapeutic action I want by blocking the M3 receptor but non-selective agent will produce many side effects it will bind to M1 receptors M2 receptors in the heart M3 receptor in the bladder and it will produce various type of side effects Kyo? M3 receptor mein bladder mein mind kiya it produce urinary uh, you know ur urine will not pass if it bind to M2 receptor in the heart it will produce tachycardia and it if it binds to m3 receptor in the eyes it will produce cycloplegia and accommodation of the you know i i will be accommodated for the near vision and uh, you know the power of accommodation of eye will be hampered i do not want these side effects so non-selective muscular anti muscarinic agents are not very you know used for therapeutic purposes but yes they are used one of the example of non-selective uh, agent is atropine it binds to all type of the muscarinic receptors then we have the selective anti-muscarinic agent example pyrenzepine pyrenzepine it binds to the m1 receptor that is present in your stomach and uh, by binding to it it uh, blocks the acid secretion in the stomach Q because we know cholinergic agar koi bhi agent hai acetylcholine jab release hoti stomach mein and it by acetylcholine jo hai wo m1 receptor pe bind karti hai it causes what secretion of the acid so these are all antagonist of the cholinergic system means to normal cholinergic stimulation produce karti hai it is going to produce anti effect cholinergic stimulation in the stomach causes the secretion of acid so this anti cholinergic agent it is causing the a decrease in the production of the acid so pyrenzepine uh, blocking the m1 receptor and producing this effect then in ka other class anti-nicotinic anti-nicotinic means they can bind to the nicotinic receptor nicotinic receptor ganglion mein present hai un per bind karegi then we call them ganglionic blockers and if the nicotinic receptor that are present on your skeletal muscle nm type of nicotinic receptors present on the uh, skeletal muscle if it binds to them then it will cause what relaxation of the muscle and uh, such agents are neuromuscular relaxants so let us first study about some anti muscarinic agents we'll start with the non-selective one a best example of non-selective anti muscarinic agent is atropine binding to the all type of the muscarinic receptors 
we know कि distribution of muscular receptor is different. Yes, for example, आपके heart में M2 type of muscular receptor है, lung में M3 है, eyes में M3 है, GIT में M3 है, bladder में M3 है. So it will bind to all of them and we will see what effects are produced but aapko ye remember karna hai ki that effects are opposite to what it is produced by the cholinergic stimulation of that receptor theek hai we'll start with the eye eye may be you know the ciliary muscle is there and the iris are there okay both of them are having the m3 type of muscarinic receptor okay cholinergic stimulation se eye mein kya hota hai eye uh, pupil constrict so एंटीकोलिनर्जिक से क्या होगा मिड्रियासिस मिड्रियासिस मीन द पीपल विल डायलेट बाय बाय एट्रोपिन ब्लॉकिंग द एम थ्री रिसेप्टर कॉजिंग द मिड्रियासिस दैट इज एंटीकोलिनर्जिक एक्शन एंड इट इज कॉजिंग द साइक्लोपलेजिया साइक्लोपलेजिया मीन्स दैट पावर ऑफ एकोमोडेशन इज लॉस्ट यू नो इट विल कॉज ब्लरी विजन द पर्सन इज नॉट एबल टू सी नियर बाय ऑब्जेक्ट वेरी केयरफुल वेरी यू नो शार्पली इट इज कॉजिंग द ब्लरी विजन बिकॉज आप हमें पता है कॉलेजिक स्टिमुलेशन से द लेंस इज एकोमोडेटेड फॉर नियर विजन एंड यू आर एबल टू नाइसली सी नियर बाय ऑब्जेक्ट बट एट्रोपिन अगर हम देंगे इट विल प्रोड्यूस एंटी इफेक्ट ऑफ दैट एंटी इफेक्ट इज वॉट यू आर नॉट एबल टू सी द नियर बाय ऑब्जेक्ट एंड सच सिचुएशन इज कॉल्ड एज पास ऑफ एकोमोडेशन so atropin can produce spasm of accommodation by causing cycloplegia and binding to the m3 receptor other uh, side effect bol lo ya fir bad effect bol lo of atropin is the photophobia because atropin jo hai it can cause these effects midriasis and cycloplegia for 4 to 5 days and you know a pupil is so much uh, dilated that a uh, good amount or we say a uh, crazy amount of light enters your eye and person even becomes photophobic he is having the phobia to the light so this can also develop uh, develop due to atropin but baat yahan par hai so why are we using this why we want to use midriasis because in many situation eye surgery karni hai hame we want the pupils to be dilated because we'll put various instruments we'll see through the camera and do various stuff so we want pupil to be dilated so we can clearly focus on the retina behind yes so we are uh, using this cycloplegia why do we want the spasm of accommodation to check what refractory index of the eye refractory index refractory index theek okay? hai that is why we are producing cycloplegia hame Uh, एक आई की जो पावर ऑफ एकोमोडेशन है वी वॉन्ट टू फिक्स इट टू अ पॉइंट ओके वी डो नॉट वॉन्ट लेंस टू यू नो टू बिकम ग्लोबुलर एंड टू बिकम थिन और थिक अगेन एंड अगेन एंड वन वंस द लेंस इज फोकसिंग फॉर द नियर विजन एट अदर मोमेंट इट इज फोकसिंग फॉर द फार विजन वी वॉन्ट टू अरेस्ट द लेंस ओके सो बिकॉज इफ यू अरेस्ट द लेंस देन ओनली यू आर प्रोड्यूसिंग द a cycloplegia and it can be used for taking refractory refractory index so we are using atropin what form can be used you are not going to give it intravenously because you want the effect on eye so we are using the eye drops to block m3 type of receptor that is present in the eye okay photophobia midriasis cycloplegia you should remember it but अदर इफेक्ट है कि दिस एट्रोपिन इज वेरी लॉन्ग एक्टिंग एजेंट लॉन्ग एक्टिंग एजेंट का मतलब है कि इट कैन ब्लॉक योर रिसेप्टर इन योर आईज फॉर फोर टू फाइव डेज एंड इट इज क्रेजी बिकॉज इफ इवन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यू नो लुक थ्रू द आई इन टू द पेशेंट वेटी ना योर सर्जरी और यू वॉन्ट टू डू एनी सर्जरी मे बी इट विल टेक फोर आर फाइव आर सिक्स आर टेन आवर्स बट वाई डू यू वॉन्ट द पेशेंट आई Uh, to be you know in the uh, state of midriasis for 4 to 5 days it is stupidity yes so nowadays the atropine is not used nowadays we have very good agents such as cyclopentolate cyclopentolate they act for 5 6 hours 7 hours 8 hours and uh, they can also do the same action as the atropine can do midriasis cycloplegia and the foot photophobia is not produced in the case of uh, cyclopentolate okay then हम स्टडी करेंगे वॉट इज द एक्शन ऑफ एट्रोपिन ऑन द जी आई ट्रैक्ट जी आई ट्रैक्ट में जो एट्रोपिन है अगेन इट विल बाइंड टू वॉट टाइप ऑफ रिसेप्टर एम थ्री टाइप ऑफ रिसेप्टर इन द जी आई टी ओके रिवाइज करते हैं हम कॉलिनर्जिक स्टिमुलेशन जब जी आई टी की होती है वॉट डज इट प्रोड्यूस इट प्रोड्यूस स्पैज 
high amount of peristaltic movement or the spasm of GIT, diarrhea like situations. So atropine can be used as an antispasmodic agent. It will block the action of acetylcholine on the M3 receptor because why? It is cholinergic antagonist agent. So antispasmodic effect is there. So what is the therapeutic action? Overactive GIT, you can manage overactive GIT or you can manage the diarrhea uh, of various, you know, uh, or diarrhea or your GIT spasms that is produced by giving atropine. Then effect on heart. Effect on heart uh, is basically dose dependent. We know that normal cholinergic stimulation on M2 receptor on the heart causes the heart to depress or bradycardia is produced by the normal cholinergic stimulation acetylcholine when binds to the M2 receptor so and cholinergic antagonist kya karega? antagonist M2 receptor ko block karega so it should do what? it should produce uh, tachycardia because it is blocking the bradycardic action of normal cholinergic stimulation but we have seen that the atropine is not like that it depends on all the doses of what dose you are giving to the patient for example 0.5 to 2 mg तक अगर आप पेट्रोपिन पेशेंट को दे रहे हो, it is seen that it produces bradycardia. I know that it is opposite of what we are thinking, but it is how it acts okay but yes if you are giving the patient uh, atropine in the dose of 5 mg to 10 mg then it is produ producing what tachycardia tachycardia is normal anticholinergic effect yes cholinergic effect is what cholinergic stimulation of the heart it produces what it produces bradycardia so anticholinergic kya hoga it will produce tachycardia tachycardia and the palpitations kahan par aap ye use kar sakte hain it can be used in the cases of what in the cases of the when the patient is admitted in the emergency department and he comes with the bradycardia yes uh, so you can give atropine to that patient or AV block you can give atropine to that patient to increase the heartbeat okay then uh, uh, the very important effect of the atropine is the anti-secretory effect we know that the secretion in the bronchus your bronchial secretions are because of what cholinergic stimulation yes Acetylcholine normally binds to receptor that is M3 type of receptor in your bronchus and it causes what? It causes secretion through the glands of the bronchus and it also causes the constriction of the bronchus. Normal cholinergic stimulation. Yes. So anticholinergic kya hoga? Or cholinergic antagonist effect kya hoga? The secretions in the bronchus will be reduced. Theke? So reduced secretion. That is why it is anti-secretory. And constriction nahi hogi bronchus ki it will cause what dilation of the bronchus so it is very good if the patient is coming uh, in emergency department and he is having bradycardia on top of that is not able to breathe so giving atropine is a very good choice because you are causing the dilation of the bronchus and you are increasing the heartbeat of the patient okay then atropine is an antidote for cholinesterases blocker in the last videos we have discussed the cholinesterases blocker kya hai those agents that can block acetylcholine esterases that is enzyme that degrades the acetylcholine in the synaptic lift and uh, acetylcholine esterases jo hai, if you block them the acetylcholine in the cleft increases and it produces cholinergic crisis yes so it is uh, the atropine is dole antidote for the cholinesterases blocker so cholinesterases blocker we know organophosphates are there they bind to your acetylcholinesterases and produces effects like what bradycardia difficulty in breathing diarrhea and all those cholinergic crises that are produced so it can be managed by that how because you block the cholinergic receptor because it is what cholinergic antagonist it blocks the cholinergic receptor and you can manage the cholinergic crisis so uh, example also physostigmine is there physostigmine be acetylcholinesterase inhibitor he hai. okay so if the patient is given a high dose of physostigmine so what is the antidote atropine okay because atropine is antidote for all the cholinesterases blockers okay then now we will discuss what is the effect of atropine on the bladder bladder mein hume pata hai what type of muscarinic receptor are there m3 type normal cholinergic stimulation of bladder what does it produce it produces urine to pass it causes the urine to pass so if uh, in the cases of the overactive bladder you can use atropine because you block the m3 receptor in the bladder okay 
and you block the insulin receptor in the bladder and uh, the urine can be contained in the bladder for a longer period of time and this is the effect of atropine okay ab main short mein discuss karna chahunga some other agents that are also having the anti muscarinic effects and they are routinely used very commonly used agents okay so let us first discuss about the two categories that is called as lamas and the samas lamas and the samas what do you mean la ma long acting muscarinic antagonist and sama short acting muscarinic antagonist obviously it is clear lama is long acting for uh, action can be produced for longer duration of time and samas are what they are short acting so action can be produced for uh, shorter period of time where are we using it lamas or samas are commonly used for copds or for managing the symptoms of bronchio constriction when your bronchus is constricted or you have some uh, diseases like asthma yeah in which your bronchus constricts or and you want to dilate the bronchus so we use two category of drugs that is lama lama i have already told you long acting a muscarinic antagonist example of the lama is what ipratropium ipratropium ठीक है द इफेक्ट इज लॉन्गर एंड फॉर सामास वी हैव वेरियस ड्रग्स फॉर सामास दैट इज योर ग्लाइको पायरोलेट ग्लाइको पायरोलेट ठीक है एंड टायोट्रोपियम टायोट्रोपियम ठीक है सो यू शुड रिमेंबर दिम वे आर वी यूजिंग इट इन द केसेज ऑफ सी ओ पी डीज एंड टू मैनेज द सिम्टम्स ऑफ द ब्रॉन्क कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड द पेशेंट इज नॉट एबल टू ब्रीथ प्रॉपरली एंड यू वॉन्ट टू डायलेट द ब्रॉन्कस ऑफ द पेशेंट ओके देन वी हैव टू अदर ड्रग्स दैट इज कॉल्ड एज द ट्रॉपिकामाइड एंड साइक्लोपेंटोलेट ट्रॉपिकामाइड और साइक्लोपेंटोलेट का आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दैट साइक्लोपेंटोलेट हम वहाँ पर यूज कर रहे हैं इन द केसेज वी वॉन्ट टू प्रोड्यूस द मिड्रियासिस बिकॉज एट्रोपिन जो है वो बहुत ही ज़्यादा देर के लिए मेट्रियास प्रोड्यूस करती है एंड इट इज़ नॉट अ वेरी गुड थेरेपेटिक इफेक्ट येस सो साइक्लोपेंटोलेट एंड ट्रोपिकामाइड ट्रोपिकामाइड कैन बी यूज एज द सब्सटीट्यूट फॉर द एट्रोपिन इन द केस ऑफ आईज आइस 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 ओके नाउ वी हैव अदर ड्रग दैट इज कॉल्ड एज बेंसट्रोपिन बेंस ट्रोपिन and trihexphenidyl tri hex phenidyl ye hum kab use kar rahe hain these drugs are used in the case of a drug induced parkinsonism hame pata hai when the parkinsonism disease mein kya hota hai dopamine ka level and the uh, and the acetylcholine levels they are in the balance normally in the substantia nigra of your brain in the brain parkinsonism mein kya hota hai dopamine levels kam ho jate hain and we give some drugs uh, as a substitute for low dopamine levels okay but Uh, as we try to balance the low dopamine levels by giving the drug the acetylcholine levels in the brain increases and uh, increase in acetylcholine levels in the brain uh, produces various extra pyramidal side effects we'll discuss about them when we will study about the uh, parkinsonism and the drugs but for now you should remember that to manage the drug induced uh, parkinsonism effect extra pyramidal side effects that are produced in the case of parkinsonism we are using two group of drugs that is called as benzotropin and trihexphenidyl okay then we have for the bladder bladder ka i will give you a mnemonic sot what do you mean by sot in the case bladder is overactive or the trouser muscle is you know such that it uh, causes the em uh, emptying of the bladder in one hour every 30 minutes 10 minutes so it is not very good for the patient to walk into the toilet every 10 minutes because of its overactive bladder so we can uh, give uh, some drugs that is called as solefenacin sole sole fenacin theek hai then we have oxy butanin 
and we have dross pm dross pm so you should remember it by the mnemonic sot but the most uh, good drugs sot d also you should remember darifenacin dari phenacin uses what it will block the m3 receptor in the bladder and it will reduce the uh, frequency of the urination in the patient in uh, some patient urination is very much frequent because of various pathological reasons so these drugs can be solifenacin oxybutynin trospium and the darifenacin out of all these four solifenacin and the darifenacin is the best because they are selective for the m3 receptor and oxybutynin and the trospium they have various side effects also because they bind to the muscarinic receptor elsewhere in your body also okay so these are all anti-muscarinic drugs or cholinergic antagonist we have used and i have discussed it is very frequently used in clinical practice and you should remember them to solve the various questions on cholinergic antagonist so thank you for watching the video and please like share and subscribe the channel uh, thank you very much